Hey guys, Matthew here. So there's been changes to the uh, to the web sockets and live searching in general a few weeks ago, and I haven't really been playing PoE that much, so I was waiting to make this video, and I decided to make it today. Either way, live searching has been kind of hard fucked to to for lack of better words. Um, we used to be able to have 80 different live searches at the same time on the official website. GGG decided to cut that down by four. So now we only have 20 available. So as you can see, if you look up here, I have different live searches going. If you were to count the tabs, I have 20. This is the 21st tab uh, in there. As you can see, if I click activate live search button, I get this disconnected from server error and the live search error. What this means is that I have reached my limit of different web sockets that I can use. Now web sockets are locked behind two different things. First off, your IP address and second off your session ID. So your session ID if you've been if you're wondering, if you can go on at least on Chrome under more tools, you have developer tools, under application, you have cookies. If you uh, if you click cookies, you have this link here. I'm not going to click it because your session ID is the equivalent of your like your login information, so I don't want to show that. Uh, but the first line would be sesh ID um, and that essentially is your unique login right now. So if I log out right now, my session ID will change when I log back in because it is the ID for your session. So, so long as you stay connected, the session ID will stay the same even if you close your computer as far as I know. But the moment you log out, you log back in, the session ID should change. Uh, which is why... Uh, you're required to be logged in to be able to live search because otherwise your session ID is not available so you can't live search. So the second thing is it's also locked behind your IP address. So what I did here to, to prove this to you guys is I went ahead and I have 20 live searches running on Chrome. What I did is I opened up a Microsoft Edge tab and I took another item here on a different account. So as you can see, this is one account, this is another account. If I try to live search on this web browser here, I will still get the uh, the uh, the error. The reason for that is quite simple. You're locked behind your session ID, but you're also locked behind your IP address when it comes to live searching. So, I've been trying to think about the best ways to fix this problem, and I've come with three different methods to fix this. Uh, so you guys can keep you know live searching as many items as you want. There's three different methods. Uh, I'll go. They'll, they'll be listed from you know the easiest to the hardest, technically. The easiest is quite simple. Use different websites. <laughs> as stupid as that may sound, uh, the Path of Exile official website is the best and it is the fastest when it comes to live searching ever since they made it uh, because it feeds off directly from the item feed information, uh, the information of items that are basically hitting the API. So it's quite frankly instant. There is no delay on there. Uh, other websites all will have a certain delay, which can be very minimal to very high. It depends on the traffic, on the, you know, how good the code is, on the, their API. It depends on a lot of things. But here's what I here's what I would advise. If you want to be really lazy about this and do it the easy way, this is probably the best way to go about it. Most other websites, at least that I know of, uh, when it comes to trading in POE, do not have a WebSocket limit. The only one is the official one which makes sense because they don't want too much traffic, uh, they don't want too much stress on their API so it can keep being both stable, healthy, and, uh, you know, working, which is quite good when it does work. So here's what I advise. I would do 20 different searches for 20 different items on the official website. So everything that you deem to be either the most meta items, right, the items with the most demand, the items with the highest potential um of, of return, like the highest return on your investment, uh, the highest profit margin, really whatever you think is the most important items uh, that you think are going to be contested the most, which means more people are going to be PMing for the same items, I would run on the official website because there is no delay. That is as fast as it will get. The second thing I would do is I would go ahead and unironically use PoE.trade. Uh, I know if you've seen my stream, you've probably heard me laugh about the people who use this website a lot. Well, guess what? We're going back to PO.trade, baby. We don't have a choice. So we've been locked down to 20 different searches. So we can't 
you know, do more. So what I advise people to do, run 20 of the most meta uniques or whatever you want on the official website, the ones that you think are going to be most contested, and then run as many as you want on PeeWee.Trade. The reality is that after the very early stage of a league, PeeWee.Trade will not really have a delay. The delay on PeeWee.Trade is honestly just there at the very, 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 very early stages of a league. Uh, we're talking like the first couple weeks. Afterwards, the delay kind of just goes away because the amount of stress on the servers kind of goes away. There's a lot less people actually live searching. Um, so you can actually do quite well using PewDiePie.Trade. The reality is that I know quite a few traders. I'm talking to some of the richest players in the game who exclusively use PewDiePie.Trade because they have so many searches already made and they don't want to convert them to PewDiePie.Trade. Uh, sorry, to the official website because it would take a very long amount of time. So they actually use PewDiePie.Trade. So unironically, it's still going to work if you use PewDiePie.Trade. So that's the first thing to note. Uh, you can actually use PewDiePie.Trade. That's the first solution. And that's not limited to PewDiePie.Trade, by the way. You could use any trading websites that you want, technically. Uh, PewDiePie app, PewDiePie.Trade are the two only ones that I actually know about. Um, now, another thing you can do is to use more IP addresses and use more accounts. So technically, that can be done in multiple ways. I'm not super geeky, and I don't have that much knowledge in that department. That being said, Google can be very helpful. Uh, a quick Google search will answer all your questions in regards to proxies, VPNs, and whatnot. So what you can do is essentially quite simple. Set up VPNs uh, with different accounts on each of the VPNs, and then have 20 searches running on each account on each VPN. I don't know if you can do this for free. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, stable or whatever. I'm not I'm not super knowledgeable in that regards, but I do know that it's possible. Now, how you can actually set up VPNs on your actual computer while like multiple different VPNs, I actually don't know. Is it doable? Yes, 100%. I don't know how to do it though. What I did when I was doing testing with live so uh, web sockets, what I did is I used a virtual machine. So I would use a virtual machine with a different account on it with a VPN to use up the, you know, more web sockets. And every virtual machine would allow me to cap out again. So 20 on one, 20 on another, 20 on another, on another, sorry. The problem with that is that every virtual machine actually, at least the ones I was running on Windows 10, have a very high demand of, you know, power to actually run them. Uh, that being said, if you know how to run Linux and how to set up a VPN on Linux, there are very, very small operating systems out there. So if you're willing to put in the work and figure this out, uh, you can actually get infinite web sockets just like you used to have to, uh, just like you used to have, sorry, by simply, you know, uh, you know, getting yourself on some VPNs. Uh, there are free VPNs out there and then making new accounts. Not a big deal. That being said, a hell of a lot harder to do than to simply use PoE.Trade. The third solution and the last one that I have to offer is quite simple, condensing your searches. So this has been nerfed. Uh, if, you, if you guys have watched my stream, I've spoke about this numerous times. There has been nerfs to how many different items you can put in a single search. Uh, basically, Every single time you put in a stat group, be it an and, a not, an if, a count, or a weighted sum, whatever you put in, you're adding basically uh, queries to the API. You're adding different uh, lines of, of things that you're asking for the API to find for you. After a specific amount, I would guess, that I don't personally know exactly, you get locked out. So the API says query too complex. So a query too complex means is Quite simply put, uh, what you're trying to ask to the API is a little bit too complex. And instead of the API going through and doing the math for you and actually finding the item, it just says, it's too complex. I'm not going to do this math for you. Uh, instead, I'm going to do math on you know much easier things so that I don't crash. So it's basically like a safety limit uh, that they put into place. Now, the reason they did that is because people were live searching off of this tool uh, that was called Volatile Pulse. Volatile Pulse, it was made to basically, you could upload a character in POB, and then uh, you could use Volatile Pulse to basically make live searches for the best possible jewels for that character, uh, depending on 
all the affixes in the POAB, it would come out with the best potential jewels for those characters. Um, the thing is, those searches were extremely complex. So the API was getting kind of drowned in information and queries, uh, which would either slow it down or straight up crash it. So they decided, you know what? No more, none of this, that's gone. So you can still do condensed uniques, but it has been nerfed. The reality is a lot of people when I made the thread on Reddit t telling people that I have found a way, a way, uh, sorry, a way to condense unique items, a lot of people decided to use different programs like MATLAB, for example, to simply put condense uniques for them and do the searches for them. That being said, all these people, basically, uh, how the programs were doing it is by using multiple, multiple, multiple weighted sums uh, functions. That got nerfed, and that stopped being accepted. Now, what you can do is you can still condense a lot of different uniques, like 20, 30, 40 plus, in one single search, but you cannot use more than one of each of the functions. So this is a little bit of a secret that I'm telling you guys. You cannot use more than one of each function if you really want it to work well. So if you can somehow condense uniques in a single search, but only using one and not if count and weighted sum, just one of each at most, then you'll still be able to condense uniques, like I said, 20, 30, 40 plus in a single filter. That being said, it is very time consuming and the method is not known, so it's something you will have to figure out. In my video that is named something like database tease, I do have some information about that. Uh, I did kind of show how to do it, but not exactly because I wanted it to be a little bit of a challenge. So I'll be linking that video in the description. Uh, of this one, so if you guys are interested in checking that out. Now, uh, this change does affect my database. So for the people who do have access to the database, uh, or who have want, have thought about you know getting access to the database, uh, this change kind of affects the value of the database. I think it actually hurts the value of my database because being only able to live search 20 items at a time, no matter if there's like 10 different. 10,000 items in the database, it really doesn't matter if you can only choose 20. So I'll be thinking of what I'm going to do for those people who do have access to the database and obviously for the future people who uh, will have access to the database in the future. Uh, I'll be making it, I'll be finding a way to add even more value than what's already in there. You can pause the video if you're interested. This is essentially the table of content for the database. So if, if you've never seen what's in there or if you've ever wondered what's in my database well this is what's in it there's a lot of stuff but obviously this changes does hurt it so I am already thinking about what I'm going to be doing to give more value out to the people who support me because obviously these people make this possible for me so that's essentially the three methods that I found out TLDR uh, use other websites set up some proxies or some virtual machines with uh, VPNs and stuff like that or third option, which is probably the most time-consuming one, but uh, you know, go ahead and just condense your searches. One thing to be, one thing to note though, is that once you've condensed your searches, they're always going to be there for you. Once you've condensed them, you can save them, and they're going to be there forever. So no matter what they do, uh, they're going to be there. Some of the other stuff in there, so for example, using other websites, who knows? Maybe someday, poe.trade is going to input a. Uh, going to force a, a maximum WebSocket limit. Who knows? Either way, though, uh, I do want to say a huge thank you to my patrons, my supporters, Caleb, Corey, Dave, Robert, Casticus, Hunter, Matthias, Rakesh, and Tim, and obviously Mr. Coffee. And then a special thanks to the biggest supporters of the channel and my content in general, Casticus, Mr. Coffee, uh, Kfish, Emil the Delver, Superjan, General XTC. Uh, huge thank you to all you guys. You guys basically make this possible for me. And uh, I I truly, truly appreciate you guys. Either way, if you have any questions regarding anything I've said in this video, let me know in the comment section. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys aren't too sad about the change that GGG implemented. It is fairly easy to get around it. Uh, that being said, it's going to require basically people to put in a little bit more time and effort if they actually want to be full-time traders. For the vast majority of the player base, though, to be honest, 20 web sockets is more than enough. And, you know, it's not exactly something you have to worry about. But for the people who actually want to take it to the next level, obviously, this is a little bit of a roadblock. 
Either way, that's going to be Matthew signing out. Until the next one, thanks for watching. Peace out.